Book One, Canto Four The Secret Knowledge A consciousness that knows not its own truth A vagrant hunter of misleading dawns Between the being's dark and luminous ends Moves here in a half-light that seems the whole, an interregnum in reality, cuts off the integral thought, the total power. It circles or stands in a vague interspace, Doubtful of its beginning and its close, Or runs upon a road that has no end. Far from the original dusk, The final flame, In some huge void in conscience it lives, Like a thought, persisting in a wide emptiness. As if an unintelligible phrase suggested a million renderings to the mind, it lends a purport to a random world, a conjecture leaning upon doubtful proof. A message misunderstood, a thought confused, missing its aim, is all that it can speak, or a fragment of the universal word. It leaves two giant letters void of sense while without sanction turns the middle sign, carrying an enigmatic universe, as if a present without future or past, repeating the same revolution's whirl, turned on its axis, in its own inane. Thus is the meaning of creation veiled, for without context reads the cosmic page. Its signs stare at us like an unknown script, as if appeared screened by a foreign tongue or code of splendor signs without a key, a portion of a parable sublime. It wears to the perishable creature's eyes the grandeur of a useless miracle, wasting itself that it may last a while, a river that can never find its sea. It runs through life and death on an edge of time. A fire in the night is its mighty action's blaze. This is our deepest need. To join once more what now is parted, opposite and twain, remote in sovereign spheres that never meet, or fronting like far poles of night and day. We must fill the immense lacuna we have made. Rewed the closed finite's lonely consonant 
with the open vowels of infinity. A hyphen must connect matter and mind, the narrow isthmus of the ascending soul. We must renew the secret bond in things. Our hearts recall the lost divine idea, reconstitute the perfect word unite the alpha and the omega in one sound then shall the spirit and nature be at one two are the ends of the mysterious plan in the wide, signless ether of the self, in the unchanging silence, white and nude, aloof, resplendent like gold dazzling suns, veiled by the ray no mortal eye can bear. The spirit's bare and absolute potencies burn in the solitude of the thoughts of God. A rapture and a radiance and a hush delivered from the approach of wounded heart Denied to the idea that looks at grief, Remote from the force that cries out in its pain, In his inalienable bliss they live, Immaculate in self-knowledge and self-power, Calm they repose on the eternal will. Only his law they count and him obey. They have no goal to reach, no aim to serve. Implacable in their timeless purity, all barter or bribe of worship they refuse. Unmoved by cry of revolt and ignorant prayer, they reckon not our virtue and our sin. They bend not to the voices that implore. They hold no traffic with error and its reign. They are guardians of the silence of the truth. They are keepers of the immutable decree. A deep surrender is their source of might, a still identity, their way to know. Motionless is their action, like a sleep. At peace, regarding the trouble beneath the stars, deathless, Watching the works of death and chance, Immobile, seeing the millenniums pass, Untouched, while the long map of fate unrolls, They look on our struggle with impartial eyes. And yet, 
without them cosmos could not be. Impervious to desire and doom and hope, their station of inviolable might, moveless, upholds the world's enormous task. Its ignorance is by their knowledge lit. Its yearning lasts by their indifference. As the height draws the low ever to climb, as the breaths draw the small to adventure vast, their aloofness drives man to surpass himself. Our passion heaves to wed the eternal's calm. Our dwarf search mind to meet the omniscient's light. Our helpless hearts to enshrine the omnipotence force, acquiescing in the wisdom that made hell, and the harsh utility of death and tears, acquiescing in the gradual steps of time, careless they seem of the grief that stings the world's heart, careless of the pain that rends its body and life. Above joy and sorrow is that grandeur's walk. They have no portion in the good that dies. Mew pure, they share not in the evil done, else might their strength be marred and could not save. Alive to the truth that dwells in God's extremes, awake to a motion of all-seeing force, the slow outcome of the long, ambiguous years, and the unexpected good from woeful deeds, the immortal sees not as we vainly see. He looks on hidden aspects and screened powers. He knows the law and natural line of things. Undriven by a brief life's will to act, unharassed by the spur of pity and fear, he makes no haste to untie the cosmic knot or the world's torn, jarring heart to reconcile. In time he waits for the eternal's hour. Yet a spiritual secret aid is there while a tardy evolution's coils wind on, and nature hews her way through adamant, a divine intervention thrones above. Alive in a dead rotating universe, we whirl not here 
upon a casual globe, abandoned to a task beyond our force. Even through the tangled anarchy called fate, and through the bitterness of death and fall, an outstretched hand is felt upon our life. It is near us in unnumbered bodies and births. In its unslackening grasp, it keeps for us safe the one inevitable, supreme result no will can take away and no doom change. The crown of conscious immortality, the Godhead promised to our struggling souls when first man's heart dared death and suffered life. One who has shaped this world is ever its lord. Our errors are his steps upon the way. He works through the fierce vicissitudes of our lives. He works through the hard breath of battle and toil. He works through our sins and sorrows and our tears. His knowledge overrules our nescience. Whatever the appearance we must bear, whatever our strong ills and present fate, when nothing we can see but drift and bail, a mighty guidance leads us still through all. After we have served this great divided world, God's bliss and oneness are our inborn right. A date is fixed in the calendar of the unknown, an anniversary of the birth sublime. Our soul shall justify its checkered walk. All will come near that now is not or far. These calm and distant mites shall act at last. Immovably ready for their destined task, the ever-wise, compassionate brilliances Await the sound of the incarnate's voice to leap and bridge the chasms of ignorance and heal the hollow yearning gulfs of life and fill the abyss that is the universe. Here, meanwhile, at the spirit's opposite pole, in the mystery of the deeps that God has built for his abode below the thinker's sight, in this compromise of a stark absolute truth with the light that dwells near the dark end of things. 
In this tragic comedy of divine disguise, this long far seeking for joy ever near, in the grandiose dream of which the world is made, in this gold dome on a black dragon base, the conscious force that acts in nature's breast, a dark-robed laborer in the cosmic scheme, carrying clay images of unborn gods, executrix of the inevitable idea, hampered, enveloped by the hoops of fate, patient trustee of slow eternal time, absolves from hour to hour her secret charge. All she foresees in masked imperative depths, the dumb intention of the unconscious gulf Answers to a will that sees upon the heights, And the evolving word's first syllable, Ponderous, brute-sensed, Contains its luminous close, Privy to a summit victories, Vast descent and the portent of the soul's immense uprise.